uh, we're going to look at Galatians 5, verse 22 through 24, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, how y'all doing on that? Love, joy, peace, long time. How's that working for you? <laughs> Should I stop now? <laughs> the condemnation is too much. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, Self-control, against such there is no law. Um, what? Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank God that that's the word of God. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people are always shooting for gaining the fruit of the spirit. They want it worked into their lives. They want to be more loving. They want more joy. They want more peace. They want less long-suffering. <laughs> Actually, more. Um, but my, you know, I'm going to tell you my view of this, which doesn't count for much. My view for attaining the fruit of the spirit is to ignore it. Amen. It is. It's to ignore it. It's to ignore the specifics of love or da 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 da. It's to ignore those things and start living life on the vine. Life on the vine. How's that sound to you? <laughs> Life on the vine. You know, sometimes we get so inward, don't we? We look inward and we're looking, we're trying, we're, you know, Lord, I'm trying. And he says, yes, you are very <laughs> trying. Um, and we, um, I don't know why, it just flashed in my mind that I used to tell people, me and Mike Gentry, uh, we wanted to do folk music in the worst way, and we ended up succeeding. <laughs> and I have no clue where that came from or what that has to do with this. But nonetheless, uh, we're, we're always, we're trying to, you know, attain to certain things. We're trying to attain. We look at that, and we don't see that it's the fruit of the Spirit. We think it's supposed to be our fruit. And we want to, I want that. I want to be like that. I want to attain unto that. And, you know, you will, what you will find at the end of most of the epistles is um, it'll be talking about stuff like this, practical things. Like it'll start off real spiritual, you know, and then it'll really get into the meat of it. And then at the end it'll talk about really manifestation, not doing. It looks like doing. But there's a difference between doing. I mean, a, an apple tree is not doing apples. You know, I'm going to do this. You know, uh, it doesn't, you know, and an apple pop out and we go, ah, just in time. You know? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It bears it. It's bearing it, you know, and we're joined with Christ. And he is the vine, and sometimes we forget, we, we, we talk about him so much in terms of, of Jesus that we see him in our minds, whether consciously or unconsciously, we see him in, as Jesus of Nazareth. And we see him as, well, he was this way, and he wants us to be this way, and he wants us to be more loving, and he wants us to be have more peace, and, and all these things, and we, we're so... You know, I mean, because we love Jesus, we want that for him. And um, in so doing, we are, are constantly separating ourselves from him. We're putting him over there and us over here, or him up there and us down here. 
and there's a realm of being with Jesus that is neither over there or up there. And in a sense, it's not even being in here. Now it is, but it's, in a sense, it's not even being in here. It's different than over there, up there, and in here. And it is seeing a vine and us being on that vine as his branches. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And to see that and to see that regularly, and if that, and just, just imagine if that was a regular view, a regular view that we had of him, then there'd be so much that we wouldn't like look up and say, oh, I need more love, you know what I mean? Because he's, he's the vine and we're the branches and that's where it comes from. And, um, and if we could see that relationship, because that's real in his heart. And here's the deal. See, we go, well, I know that's real in his heart, but, but we're still thinking it's sort of a theological thought in his heart, and he believes that. No, this is real to him. And when he thinks of us, he doesn't just think of us as, as Christians walking around, going to church, and trying to be good on the job, or trying to do this, or whatever. He, Jesus thinks of us as, I'm the true vine, and you're my branch. I mean, that's the way he thinks. And that's the way he relates, but a lot of times we miss that. Because if you can imagine uh, the Lord, you know, uh, Try, without trying to separate it, but just to, to give a picture of this. If he were standing there and we were praying and he is standing there over us and we're going, you know, Lord, you know, just make me more loving. And he's saying, you know, I'm, I am your, I'm the vine upon which you are. And you are, to me, you're a branch. And we would go, well, you know, just help me. I know that theologically, but, you know, just help me. Help me to get, do you, do you kind of see what I'm saying? And he's going, look, I'm really trying to get you to, to, with my mind in you and, and my view of these things. But, but the vine and branch, there's almost no Christian that doesn't believe that they're, they're a branch and he's the vine, you know. But... What kind of belief is that? That's believing in the thought of it, or you know, we say the theology of it, or the doctrine of it. That's, but the the fact of it. I, I, okay, somehow I believe that's a fact, but it doesn't move me to relate that way. It only moves me to think of that when that subject's brought up. Um, Another way that we do it is we draw a circle on the board and we say that's Christ and we say you're not out here in a little circle out here with a B in it for the believer and we say you know you're not outside of him you're in Christ but again <clears throat> that can fail to communicate <clears throat> his relationship or you could say his heart his the way that he's bought and paid for, the way that he died to bring about, the way that he wants us. I want you this way. And I want you to quit praying like a Jew that hasn't met me yet, outside of me, trying to get me to do stuff from heaven for you. But I want you, and I want you this way. See, well, Jesus wants me. Jesus loves me. Um, but I want you this way. I want you drawing from me instead of trying to get me to do something for you. And, you know, to be one, to be one is, we, we hear that a lot around here. But to be one is one. It's not two. And to be one means something beyond merely um, uh, believe, and you know, it's, it's like this, it, it's beyond merely believing whatever other Christian believes. Let's believe what Jesus believes. Let's believe what he believes. 
So that's why I said, to me, the best way to get the fruit of the Spirit is to ignore the fruit of the Spirit as a thing and start living off the vine. Start believing or, or relating. Let's forget believing even anymore because we all believe. Relating as one who is drawing life from the vine. The end result of that will be fruit. The end result of that will be things that we couldn't imagine. The end result of that will be Christ in many forms. Many forms coming out. <clears throat> I assume that a branch that's grafted into a, into a vine, especially if it was, uh, well, let's see. We can look at that in Romans. What is it? Romans 11? Um, verse 16. <clears throat> and down. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. If the root be holy, so are the branches. All right. So there has to be an overcoming or a, or, you know, I'll just call it even a victory in the sense of there has to be a victory that's simply based on Christ, not on us. Simply, sim I'm using the word simply, not merely. I use the word simply because it is as simple as, you know, I mean, let's just say it like this. How many of you love Jesus? Raise your hand. Okay. I saw a few people who didn't raise your hand, and, <laughs> and we will be meeting afterwards in my office. Anyway, uh, I'm joking. Um, we love Jesus, but that relationship that he desires on a simple basis. Stop being single. Stop being single. Why don't you get married? <laughs> you know? Why don't you come into union? Why don't you believe? Why don't you, um, you know... It's like he died, he rose again, he came, he told us what, it, what the deal is, he sent the Holy Spirit, then he sent Paul to search it all, to hear it all, then he put it in the Bible, and then he handed us the Bible, and he says, follow that. And not our own feelings are, or, or not teachings, whether they're from me or here or anywhere, that separate us from the love of God. And that love is not defined as, I just love you. That love is defined as, I have, I have made you one with me. So draw from me, draw from me. Okay, he goes on to say here, because if the root be holy, so are the branches. So if you're a branch, how many of you are branches? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you sometimes don't act like branches? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you have a cell phone trying to record this and it says low battery? Raise your hand. <laughs> and it's wanting me to do something. Still working. Okay. <laughs> when you'll be listening to this. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this, I mean, this really can't get any, any better. And if the root be holy, is Jesus the root? And is he holy? Okay, then guess what? Then the branches are. But you say, no, we're not. Innately, we're not. His roots are holy. I don't have holy roots. I have yucky background roots. But now you're a branch. Now you're cut out of that. Now you have to believe that. Now you have to 
not, not just believe that, but relate to him like that. Because I, I bet you he's going to continue talking about that. What do you think? Next verse. Verse 17. For if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, I don't know about you, but that pretty much describes me before I met Jesus. Being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. So you, you are meant to be a partaker of all that the root can produce. But to do that, to do that, there was a death. Okay, keep your place. Well, I think we, we might come back here. So keep it. Go back to Galatians. I should have said this, but Galatians 5, verse 22. Let's read it again. 522. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Verse 24. Anybody see that? Anybody see that connected to the fruit of the Spirit? You've been grafted out. You've been cut out of your old, wild, whatever you were. Or mild. <laughs> your mild, sinful life. <laughs> you were cut out of your mildness. <laughs> and grafted into his wildness. <clears throat> um, but the, the point of that is, is it's talking about grafting in Romans 6. You're a branch, but you were cut out because you can't be grafted into something that lest you were cut out of something else. And this includes, and in every case when it starts talking about fruit, there's going to be a death. There's going to be a cross. Did you know that? I mean, I know a whole lot of people who never read verse 24 in Galatians 5. They don't read it. They're too busy with 22, yeah, the first two verses there and going, the fruit of this, be and I'm going to try hard, you know, and they that are Christ have crucified. What? They, they, many of them have never even heard the concept. Is it in the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. But, and so, so you say, well, are you looking at them and judging? Yeah, I know sense. I'm judging this. I'm judging that if they don't know about the being cut out of the old tree and placed into another one and grafted in so that what's in him can come into us, then they're struggling like crazy. That's not a judgment. That's a let's pray. Let's share. Let's help. Let's write. Let's do whatever we can. Let's carry the gospel. And not just the gospel of salvation, but the word of life. The word of life. So there's this, there's this stream that we see in Galatians 5. There's this stream, and, and we're a branch, and he's the root, and he's the vine. And there's this stream that flows, and it's love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith, all, long-suffering. All of these, it's all of these things that can stream through us. Yeah. It's like a, a river, a stream <laughs> in us. Does that kind of sound familiar? Out of your, out of your innermost being shall flow all kind of polluted water. Is that what it says? No. Now, it is true if, if we don't understand that we've been grafted out, there's been a death, there's been a, there's been a, 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 a ax put to the root. And that has been for one part. We go, why are you hurting me, Lord? Why would you make us crucified with you? Why would this be a teaching? Why would you have this? Why didn't you just die for us the way everybody taught it before I ran into those people? <laughs> and his answer would be, so that you could be one with me, so you could get another stream flowing in you. <laughs> That's why. 
you know, we, how many of you know Jesus once you're filled? Raise your hands. Okay, so we go, well, I'm filled with the Spirit. So, you know, I talk in tongues or whatever. Some of you don't even need to. You speak in lips a lot. But that's another story. And they're supposed to, we're supposed to be filled with all the fullness of God. My Lord, come on. You know, okay, let's, let's walk around. Let's, let's, you know, two weeks from now on Sunday morning, let's not come to church here. Let's all just as a crowd visit different churches and spend about 15 minutes in there and see how much the, of the fullness of God you see. Okay. You go, well, I don't see much. Well, how much do you see in here? <laughs> Come on. I mean, let's be honest. You know, it applies to us also. And especially we who at least have the nuggets of the truth of this reality of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And, and what is that? I mean, I would think that would be a hope for a change to be seen down here. Hope that God would have, a hope that he would have. So Galatians 5 is talking about a stream, not something he's wanting you to go out and attain to, love, joy, peace, but a stream, a flow, but it's a, it's a flow from within that that requires your focus and your concentration not to be on the stream, but on the connection. Why would, he, why would he crucify me? Why would he cut me out? Why would I feel the blade or the ax? Why would he do that? So that we could be grafted in, not just into a stream, but into him. And the stream of life that is him that can produce what we never could. So, you know, so why focus on something that is, we're not even seeing it as the result of a stream. Does that make sense? We don't see it as a stream from within. We, we see that as something that God, you know, like he plays softball or something. Here comes love, you know. Not so hard next time, Lord. You know, hitting us with all, you know, you know, our gifts, you know. Lord, you know, I've got my Christmas tree set up here. Put gifts all around it so that I, at least nine of them, you know, <laughs> so that I can function and, you know, no, no, he's not Santa. He's not Santa Claus trying to bring you gifts. He's the vine. You go, well, Santa's more jolly. You know, I don't know what your problem is, but, you know, your answer is Jesus the vine. That's all I know how to say it. That's the only way I know how to say it. It's not about relating to something exterior to you that's more jolly. You know, well, I know I'll get joy from him. <laughs> you know, jolly old Saint Nick. No, you don't, you don't need to relate to him on a basis of giving you that. You need him. Him and the stream that he will form inside of you. Let's see. Let's go over to uh, John 15. Verse 1. I am the true vine. All right, so there are other streams, huh? You can hook into something fake. You can hook into something that's not him. And, and I'll just, I'll tell you a fact. You know, we're no different than any other group in the sense that a person can hook into us instead of Jesus here, instead of Jesus and the Jesus we pray. And they can hook into that, and they can hook into our teachings instead of finding the thing that, from which we got Jesus, the Bible and the truth. And they can become a part of a group that teaches this, or each of us 
can determine in our heart that I'm going to be a carrier. I'm going to be a carrier, you know, of this thing. And, and it's going to be life in me, and it's going to be the result of his stream because I am going to relate to him no longer after the flesh and no longer simply based on the flesh, like, Lord, fix this, help my job, you know, make me feel better, do this, do, you know what I mean? All these external temporal things that were, you know, and I'm not, we pray for them, I pray for them. I have no problem with praying for them, except if we're not regularly saying, Lord, I want you, and I want you for me, not just for everybody else, and, and here's why I say that, because, you know, we can go, oh, God, you know, we got three people in this church I want to pray for. They are trouble, these three people. You know their name, and I'll say it right now. Their names are not really. I won't say. <laughs> yeah. I. You know. While y'all are while y'all are talking, I'm going to drink. I would never say anybody's name, but but the initials are Mike Wallace. But <laughs> <laughs> all of you aren't here, but last Thursday night when I was teaching, I actually turned that Mike was sitting over here, and I turned that, and I used one of my things like that against Kelly, and I had to literally turn to Mike afterwards after I had insulted Kelly and said, I am so sorry. It's not that I don't love you anymore, Mike, or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Okay, so what's a vine dresser? That's, that's the one that, you know, that prunes and that uh, makes sure the bugs are off and that, you know, puts manure around you to help you to grow. Is that right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll cut off part of you. He'll prune you. He'll, you know, whoosh, you know, whoosh, whoosh, and go, all this that looks so good. I was so fluffy, you know. And then he says, well, here, maybe this will help. And he starts putting manure all around you and stuff and you're going <laughs> he hates me no he doesn't hate you he loves you and he's working on you and you go yeah i can see that no no he's trying to bring forth more stream in you more of his flow more of his life that's what's going on and you can you know it's it's like you know, yes, there's a devil and all this kind of stuff, but don't attribute everything that, that seems bad to you as the devil because those kind of things are meant for you to help you. And if you're always fighting against it, then you're always resisting the work of God in your life while you pray, Lord, make me more of an of a open vessel for the life of Christ, you know. I'm just an earthen vessel, but make me more of a channel. And the Lord was sharing with me yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. He spoke to me and he said, he gave me a title. He said, broken or broken open. And I saw what he meant. What he was saying was, you know, brokenness is hard to attain. Did you know that? I mean, just uh, some of us can count on one hand how many times we've been broken before the Lord for, you know, most of our Christian walk. I mean, really, really broken. And then many, and much of the time we're just going, I would like to be broken. But, you know, it's a long, arduous process to bring me to that. <clears throat> and he, so he was showing me brokenness. A lot of times true, I mean, genuine brokenness is, 
oh God, I'm sorry. And you can see your faults and you can see where you haven't been relating to him. And Lord, I'm just, I'm just so sorry and I'm just a mess. And I just really, really, I admit that I'm just a mess. And Lord, you know, and it's just, we're broken and, and I'm not against that. But he, that's not what the Lord said to me yesterday. He said, broken or broken open. And he said, as an earthen vessel, he, he breaks you open. He, put, he lets your cracks show so that the treasure, for we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. And the brokenness lets the, and there's the, there's the picture up there. Uh, the vessels and the, the treasure shining out of it. And that was drawn by a guy and when I was in Costa Rica, and he was my translator, <clears throat> and, uh, and I was sharing, and he was translating for me. And while he told me afterwards, he said, oh, my God. He said, I, I was being knocked over with the truth of God. Uh, while you were sharing, and there was there'd be a time I'd go, you know, and da 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 da, -da and he'd just stand there, and I'd go, hey, and he'd go, oh, oh, yeah. and he said I was meditating on what you were saying, and he, and so the next day, because the conference was still going on, and he was still my translator, he walked up at that picture. He said I couldn't sleep all night. I stayed up and drew this picture, painted this picture. I want you to have it. And I thought, wow, Jesus, broken vessels where Christ can be seen through us, broken open. Not, you know, we, our whole thing is to stay closed. You know, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to see any cracks. You know, I don't want anybody to know that I have flaws. Really, you're an earthen vessel, and you don't want anybody to know. You know, what? Then what are you working on? You, you know, I want to be the this gorgeous vessel, you know. Any of you remember Raiders of the Lost Ark or whichever one it was where this is in the room full of cups and you, you have to pick the right cup that was Jesus' cup that he drank out of on the, the Last Supper. And, you know, and there's all different kinds, shapes, sizes, and everything. And if you don't get it right, you die. How many of you actually remember that? Raise your hand. Yeah, several of you. And so he did get it right because instead of picking one with it was all gorgeous vessel, he picked an earthen vessel because Jesus was, was, that, was that way as he walked before men. And, but, but just think of that. Now we see that and we watch it in the movie and we go, oh, well done. Oh, well done. But then, as soon as we're in a situation where somebody might see our cracks and our, our earth in this, we go, oh, I gotta fix that, I gotta do something, I gotta make myself, you know, presentable. What well, can we, you know, and I'm not, I'm not talking about makeup, girls. Uh, no, I'm not, because some of you need it, so. <laughs> I'm kidding, I am just kidding. This is the last day of this church, isn't it? <laughs> Come back Sunday after next, and the only people in here are men. <laughs> I go, y'all need it too. <laughs> it's just a fact that we, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm not, but I am talking about we don't want people to know if we're going through a hard time, right? We don't want them to know how that I'm not, you know, how you doing? Oh, praise God, I'm doing good. You know, are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, because <laughs> we're, not, we're not ready to let all that, I, let me get to a place where I'm handling it better in the Lord. See, but you know, he can shine out of your weakness, can't he? He can, he can shine out of your weakness. Paul said, I glory in all these things that make me look cracked. That's Randy's translation of that. You know, I glory in that because when I am weak, then am I strong because when I am weak, then the power of God can be seen, not, my, not me, that the excellency of the power may be of God. This is, this is God in that person. This, they're, they're full of weakness. They're full of lack. They're full of 
this and that. They're going through all kind of stuff, and and we don't we don't want people to know we're going through all kind of stuff. But wouldn't it be better to be to for people to know that you were weak and going through all kind of stuff, but still see Jesus and go, you know, you're with the Lord even. Even in this, you're with the Lord. Praise God. So, um, I haven't read much here, but um, verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring, might bring forth more fruit. Abide, verse 4, abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and I in you. And that, see, we always go, well, what does it mean to abide in him? It means to, to not try to be loving or peaceful or... It means to not do that as well as... I'm, my relationship, Jesus, with you is you're the vine and I'm the branch... And I don't need people to see my fruit. I need them to see you, to see what's true and real. I don't need to fake everything. I don't need to cover up everything. I don't need to, you know, do all of that stuff. I need to press into oneness with him. That's my answer. So... Um, Abide, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. So that means that anything that we produce that isn't, doesn't come from him is not fruit. You cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. Then it, whatever you're calling it, well, I was... I was, I had a lot of fake peace today, and it really, people felt good about being around me. <laughs> you know? Did Jesus feel good, you know, about being around you? <laughs> He's going, no, faker. You know? And is it a shame to be known as a mess? It's not. It shouldn't be. I mean, I remember, and we don't do it so much here. I mean, we do, a, we do a fair amount of altar calls, but when I was in Bible school, of course, we would have chapel and we would have different things, and, and the leaders would have an altar call, and I was down at the altar every time. And one time I was down there, and one of the brothers said to me, <clears throat> he said, Randy, you're down here all the time. <laughs> he, he wasn't. But he says, you're down here at this altar all the time. And he said, aren't you afraid that people are going to just think you're a mess? <laughs> I said, I am a mess. I need Jesus. That's why I'm down here. I'm not showing off. I'm not trying to act spiritual. You know, I'm not, you know, because some people would go to the altar to look spiritual. But if you're down there every time, they know you're not spiritual. You know what I mean? It's like, oh boy, it's ugly over there praying again, you know. And I just, I, I thought, you know, I'm just not ashamed that I need Jesus. I do need Jesus. I want Jesus. I don't care what anybody thinks here. I'm really, I don't care. I just, I'm going to get him and I'm going to keep coming down to this altar and I'm going to keep praying like this is a real altar, not just a piece of wood that we call an altar, like a real altar. Lord, bring me into a death that will bring forth your life. Make it real and make it forever. Make it last. You know what I mean? Let, let's let this thing really go for a good long while, like my whole life. But that's a continual process, isn't it? Continually staying before the Lord with that heart and that spirit. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go to John 12, 24. <clears throat> we talked about... Um, Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23 and 24. And in talking about that, we're actually 
um, we're actually talking about a physical manifestation that you could call in the realm of character. Now, it's not character, it's Christ in you. Love, joy, peace. Okay. It's not character, it's Christ. So if we say we're seeking the character of God, that could still make us separate from him and crying out. But I don't, I don't want a, a better character. I want Christ. And so Galatians 5 is, is helping us to see that. But to get to that, it requires a death. It requires verse 24. It requires being cut out, as in Romans 11, being cut out of the old vine and grafted into the new. But the emphasis there doesn't really talk about grafting at that point. It just says that fruit comes from God himself, not from man. But it does talk about the grafting in terms of you, you, know, you have crucified all the fruit uh, when the, when all, and the stream ceased when you were cut out, okay, crucified, okay. And then we went over to John 15, and John 15, the emphasis is upon being grafted in. And if you're grafted in, and there it doesn't mention so much the cut out that Galatians 5 does, okay. It's talking about being grafted into. And being grafted into um, is, it is a, um, it is a, well, it's, it's an abiding. We'll just, we'll just stay with that. But it talks about the fruit in a little bit different way. Uh, Jesus, after, right after that, and still in that same chapter, starts talking about it. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And and I've had, I've had people who know the Lord probably way more than me say, you know, well, see, we still have to keep the commandments. And I said, well, it, but it, what he just commanded was, was to abide in him, you know? I mean, that's what it says. And so, you know, you, but if we're not settled on these issues, you can see how this stuff will mess with you, can't you? I mean, it does. It, it messed with me in my early walk, but as I began to know the Lord, I'd see, and he's, the way he's talking about it is, you know, he says, keep my com commandment, um, th let my joy remain in you. Well, that's being in the vine, you know, and that you may love as I love. That's, a, that's being in him. And so you start seeing this in um, real life situations where it's really starting to, to hit home, this could work. Yes, Carolyn? That, that scripture is what turned my mind from being, you know, trying to do it and being legalistic, you might that, to realizing is that I don't have to show my love for him to keep the commandments or keep in the commandments showing my love. It's just that if I love him, it will start flowing. Right. And it will be a result of the flow than my time kept failing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and, you know, without that grafting, we, that's what we do. We fail. That's, you know. And, and we can be like the Pharisees who thought that they were doing good and deceived themselves, but they were just as bad as anybody else. They just were more religious. They weren't more formed in the image of Christ. And, I mean, how many really want to be more religious? I mean, I don't. I don't want to be more religious. I'm sorry. I don't. I want Jesus, and I want him, and I don't just want him, I don't want him just have him walking beside me or, you know, showering stuff on me so people say, oh, look, God just uses and showers stuff on him, and therefore... He must really be of God or whatever. I want Jesus in me in the hard places. I want to be able to lay down my life. I want to be able to love the unlovely. I want, I want that kind of reality in me by him. Not just in me. In me by him. 
I'd like to have peace when, you know, Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So we go, well, good, but it doesn't help me right now because I'm not having peace, you know. He said, because you're still in the world. Be in me. Abide in me, you know. And you say, well, where do you get that from? Well, that I'm quoting from John 16 and verse, uh, chapter 15 said, abide in me. And then you go to 16 and you say, see, it's all one thing. But we, we go, oh, he's talking about something different because there's a 16 in front of these verse, you know, this portion or something. <clears throat> so John uh, 12 is dealing with a different purpose in death, okay? The other two had primarily to do with fruit and it had to do with the process. But John 12 is dealing with a completely different thing. So um, let's look at verse, um, <clears throat> let's start at verse 20. There were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, who was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip cometh and take, telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Okay, so there's this, there's this little bit of a progression that's happening here. There are these Greeks that have come up to the feast in Israel. So they're, they're, you know, they're Greeks in the Jewish feast, but they're drawn to at least something there. But then they hear about Jesus, and then it says, The same came therefore to Philip, who were the, was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Look, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. <clears throat> so Philip, the process moves on. He goes, Oh, man, here, let me go get Andrew. And so they go get Andrew, and Philip and Andrew, uh, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew uh, again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus, and this is Jesus' response, okay? So before we read his response, because I know you're not familiar with this, <laughs> um, um, this is exciting for the disciples. We, here's some, you know, we've, we've had some believers among the Jews, but now we're getting some Gentiles in here. We're getting some Greeks. Jesus is having an effect. We're getting followers from many different nations, and this is a big deal. And something really big is happening because now we're adding other nations. So they come tell Jesus, and they're ready for Jesus to go, this is really good too, you know, and they're all excited. So verse 20, then Jesus answered them saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Okay. So here, the fruit is not love, joy, peace, that kind of thing. The fruit is what kind of followers you're going to get. I'll, I'll show you in just a minute if you don't know that. It's, I mean, it's just right there in order. But it's the first part certainly bears that out if you haven't read the rest of it. The first part is we got some different kind of thing. We've got a movement going now. We've got followers uh, from a different nation now, and, and they're excited, and they want Jesus to be excited, and Jesus is not excited. Jesus is excited about one thing. The cross, because that's the door, and that's the avenue, and that's where he's going to get the kind of followers that he wants, okay? So he, so this isn't about being lovey or PC or, <laughs> you know, this is about getting the right kind of followers, and Jesus is not impressed. So he says, here's what works. I the only way we're going to get the right thing is I have to fall into the ground and die. Because he's talking about himself, and he's, he's the one who's fixing to go to the cross. I have to fall into the ground and die. And if I die, then there's going to be more seed that's like me. Okay? Then there's going to be more seed like me. But if I don't, 
we're not going to get, you know, the, uh, these Greeks are not the answer. And it's not just about getting warm bodies to follow us. We want Christ formed. You know, I mean, Jesus could literally say that, but they don't fully understand. But, uh, you know, that Christ would be formed in us, not just Christian, but Christ. So, now let's look at the proof. Verse 23, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it under eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Okay, do anybody see that? That he is content, he's moved right into, here's the kind of followers I want. Those who are with him. All right, so here's the way we read this. If any man follow me and we go, I'll follow you, Jesus. I'll be a Christian and I'll go to church and I'll, he's not saying follow him like that. He's saying specifically follow me like this. A seed must fall into the ground and die. And if it die, it'll bring forth much fruit. And if any man wants to follow me, and then come this same way. If any man, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall uh, also my servant be. If any man serve him, him will my father glory, um, um, honor. And then he says, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. And this is, this is Jesus. This is his view. This is the way he relates to the Father. He is he came to not just heal and bless and change the world and do all of that because at, as this point came up right here, no one had come into that image because he hadn't died yet. They were just healed, blessed, fed, following his teachings, and he wants more than followers of his teachings. He wants to be a dying seed and he wants us to become that for others also. To follow in this same way. To, and he basically is saying, that, look guys, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to accomplish this. This is the fruit. Uh, if the seed fall on the ground and die, or if it doesn't, okay, then you're, he abideth alone. There'll just be one, you know, in the you know, I, I'll use this example. I haven't used it in years, but it would be if if there were, you know, God created the earth and we were all cows. And Jesus came and he was not a cow. He was a thoroughbred horse. Completely different than all of us cows. And if it were the same analogy as a seed falling into the ground and dying, then that horse is going, you know, he could go, you know, hey, you 12 cows, come follow me, you know. And he's going, and they're going, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and that's, you see that reaction from them all the time, you know. And so he's got these cows following him, and then these cows go and gather up some other cows. They're Greek cows, but they're, you know, they're still cows. And they go, you know, and Jesus is going, look, in, again, using the analogy of the seed, I have to fall, I'm the only seed. If I do not die, if I do not go into a death, I'll be the only one that ever was a thoroughbred horse, and everyone else will be a cow and will stay a cow. But if I die, then it's going to bring forth, and you can use, you know, if you use the analogy of a seed, Jesus being not a thoroughbred horse, but a completely different seed from anything else. But I think the, the contrast of a thoroughbred horse and cow helps us to get how deep this thing is. And he's going, I have to fall into the ground and die. And if I die, then there's going to come up more like me. But if I don't, and I just preach, and I just teach, and we just do ministry together, and we da 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 da, then it's no one's ever going to change, and it's going to be the great cow ministry. And he said, I don't want that. And I don't want it enough that I will be the first one to die. But if there's going to be fruit on that level, because see, you know, and I'm about to quit. This is my first ending. 
But we talk about world evangelization. You know, just like we talk about fruit. You know, well, you know, we write it on the board. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And you need to be more loving. And you need to be. And we put it on that basis. And it's never him. And it's never life. And it's never a stream. It's always us changing and getting more whatever. So we draw world evangelization on the thing. We need to go. And, I, you know, and I'm not putting it down. My wife and I have been missionaries. I travel all kind of places every year uh, outside the United States. And, and we go, you know, we need to go there and we need to share the gospel with them. And we need to, you know, well, you can get them saved. I mean, when Deb and I were missionaries on the mission field, we saw groups come from the United States. They'd set up a big tent or they'd come into a church and they'd have a big revival type thing and people would come down and get prayed and they'd take pictures of everybody and you know all of the great things that they did and they'd go back and they'd put it in their newsletter and they'd spread it around how great that meeting was but we were missionaries we were dying seeds left there to fall into the ground and die and we saw the results of it and first of all a whole lot of people that in at least in jamaica they just would come down just because it was something to do they'd show up people would come out of the woodwork just to show up because there's nothing going on <laughs> you know and so this was exciting for them. and and it didn't matter which american group came in and did a great revival thing the same people would go down to the altar. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you the truth. I know what I'm talking about. The same people would go. And so they're taking pictures going, do you see we, we had thousands get saved? Well, so did the group before you. And it was the same people, <laughs> you know. And what we found is we had to lay down our life and we had to, you know, literally die to ourselves and let Christ be seen and then there was an effect, and I won't tell you the effect, 20 years later when we came back and didn't know it, didn't have any clue there was an effect, but I will tell you that there was an effect. We didn't know because we, we, we laid down our lives and we weren't looking for results. We were looking to either abide in the vine or fall in the ground and die. That's all you do. That's where your focus is. It's always about him. It's always to bring forth more of him. So... Um, so, you know, world evangelization is not going to come by preaching to cows and telling them about what Jesus did. It's going to come by thoroughbreds falling on the ground and die. Is this a good place to stop? Or should I just give you my second ending and move on? Let's stand together. we join hands across the aisle we don't we don't do that very often and let's just show the unity of this thing that we want the Lord to do this thing that 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 we you know we say we want the Lord to do this in us but how about we start praying instead of Lord I want this really bad how about we pray Lord do what you want what's your desire and do that in us yes. father we come in Jesus name Lord, we don't claim any righteousness or goodness of our own. We, we just want you. We, are not, we're not, we don't want to stand before you one day and offer up self-righteousness. We just want to be with you, and we want your life flowing in us. But more than that, we want to pray according to what you want, that you want this, that you want us close, that you desire this spirit of of, uh, of oneness where your stream, where your flow can be in us and we can be of the same kind and not just cows that are trying to be Christian but being after your kind and having your nature and, and Lord also just for the, the more seed to come up that is like you, Lord help us to embrace this death that comes to life for others not just ourselves not just fruit in us not just making us look better because we have your fruit but a death that will bring life to others also father 
So Lord, help us to see by the Holy Spirit the separation of these different forms of, of death and how what they bring forth. And then, Lord, just Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see Jesus in a greater way. And we will be changed, transformed, metamorphosed into that same image from glory to glory. Oh, we long for it. And we know that if we do, that your longings are much deeper and greater. So have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll hug somebody and bless them in the name of Jesus.